Hello everybody, my name is Rebecca Grace from Rebecca Grace Designs and I am the creator of the Encyclopedia of Code, which provides hundreds of copy and paste code snippets for Squarespace website designers to use on their clients' websites. Today we are going to be looking at the basics of CSS. So the first thing that you need to know about CSS is that it's one of many different coding languages and each language kind of has its own purpose and its own style to it. So the three most common coding languages you'll come across when it comes to web design is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML you can think of like the content of a site. So for example here you'll see I have a heading 1, a heading 2, and a paragraph. This tells the website what you want on it in terms of content. CSS is then the styling of that. So it applies style to this such as I want the title to be blue and I want the description to be red and so on. JavaScript applies action. So for instance, if I click on this title, I want such and such to happen. Um, I want, you know, when the page loads, such and such to happen. So you have your content is HTML, your style is CSS, and the actions is JavaScript in the most um, kind of basic uh, description. So the good news is that CSS is arguably one of the most easy coding languages to learn how to use and edit um, because it has a very similar structure as you go throughout. Um, so let's jump in. So you'll notice here that I have a heading one um, with a class of title, heading two, and a paragraph with a class of title, an ID, and some description. So the basic layout of CSS is that you have a selector which basically tells the CSS what you're trying to target. So it chooses or picks the element or elements that you're trying to target, has an open and a closing curly bracket, and then inside it has a property, which is what you are trying to change, and then a value, which is what you're trying to change it to. Um, between them is a colon and after is a semicolon. So this is the basic structure of CSS. Selector, open curly bracket, the property, colon, value, semicolon, closing curly bracket. Um, so when you're writing this, make sure you don't leave out any brackets or the semicolon or colon um, because you'll, you'll get an error and in Squarespace it will tell you that there's an error at that line. Okay. So let's look at an example of this. My selector could be heading one. I want to change my heading once. I'm going to do an open and closing curly bracket. The property could be color. I want to change the color, colon, and I'm going to change it to red, semicolon. And you'll notice that my heading one has now turned red. Okay, so selector, property, value. Now, the properties here, there are so many, um, and even experienced coders will need to look up a property now and then um, because there's just so many of them, and they all have different value options that you can use. So depending on the property you choose, it's looking for specific things to be inputted as the value. Um, and I've actually provided a guide for this. So below this video in my freebies, you can see a guide of the 41 most popular properties used when designing in Squarespace and all of their different value options. So I suggest you jump down there and grab that free guide. So you have a list of the most popular ones and what you could be expected to put in here. The trickiest part of CSS is the selector. Knowing how to target an element and there's lots and lots of different ways to do this. The three most common types of selectors is the name such as heading one, heading two, P, um, or an ID or a class. So a class is something that's applied to multiple different elements. So for instance, the buttons in Squarespace will all have the class, you know, Squarespace button, for instance. So if it's an element that is similar and used multiple times across the site, they'll have classes so that you can style multiple elements at the same time. So for instance, you'll notice my heading one and my P both have a class of title. So if I wanted them both to be red, 
then I can use their class to select both of them at the same time. To do that with a class, we put a period first to say that I'm choosing a class and then just put the class name. And you'll notice that both my heading one and P will both be read because they both have the class of title. Okay. An ID is specific to that element. So that element will be the only one on that page that has that particular ID. The most common one in Squarespace is block IDs, and so I've provided one here. And so if I want to target only this one element, then what I'm going to use is its block ID. And before an ID, we use a hashtag to say that I'm choosing an ID. And then you put the ID in there, and you'll notice that now the P tag, or the P there, is the only one that's read because it's the only one that has that ID. Okay, so I could choose to use H1, H2, or P, or I could choose a class, or I can choose an ID. And this kind of just takes experience as you go through knowing um, what to use to target that element. That's the trickiest part. But once you've chosen a selector, again, you're choosing a property and a value to change. So let's look at some examples on Squarespace. So this is a Squarespace 7.1 site. Regardless of what version you're on, the properties don't change. The properties and the values are the same regardless of whether you're on Squarespace or WordPress or anything else. The properties and values are set. It's the selector that changes depending on what um, version you're on, um, whether you're on Squarespace or WordPress or what have you. So Squarespace will have a particular set of classes and IDs and things like that that you can use to style in Squarespace. And we're going to put this into design custom CSS. I highly recommend you keep all of your CSS in the exact same area so that you're not writing duplicates and unnecessary pieces of code. So try and keep it all in the same place. Okay. And we're also going to use comments to keep our CSS organized. So whenever you're writing CSS for anything, you're going to put slash star star slash. And in between here, you can leave notes for yourself in order to keep everything nice and organized. So I'm going to put something like um, heading on home page so that I know what it's about. And again, this just helps keep you organized um, and it makes sure that you're not writing unnecessary code. I do have a, another video on blog post on the mistakes to avoid when writing CSS. So I highly recommend you jump over to that video um, when you're done with this one, just to make sure that you're keeping everything organized and avoiding the most common errors. Okay, so let's say I wanna change the color of this heading one. I wanna see some options I have for targeting this particular element. So I'm in Chrome and I have Chrome developer tools turned on I'm going to right click on this element and select inspect. And this shows me all of the HTML here. And in this side, it shows me all of this CSS. And so I can use these to help me write new CSS for this. So you'll notice that when I hover over here, it highlights the element I want to change and it has an H1. So I could say I want H1, open and closing curly bracket, to be red. The problem with choosing this selector is that this is going to change all of the H1s across my site. And I can actually do that using the style editor. So you'll notice nothing changed because I can change it in the style editor. I don't need to write code for that. And so in order to make this code work, I have to set an important tag on it saying I want you to override the Squarespace editor. And if you're having to write an important tag, um, usually that means you can either do it in the style editor or you have that code written somewhere else. You want to try and avoid using this tag. Okay, so in this case, this is not a good choice of selector because this is going to change all of the heading ones on my site. If I want to just change this heading one, then that means I need to apply um, some other element to it, some other either a class or an ID. And I notice I don't have a class or ID here. Um, but as I go up, I notice that I could choose the block ID for this section, say, okay, I only want to target the H1 inside of this block. And so I'm going to apply the block ID. Now I could copy this 
and put hashtag block ID or you can use something like this Chrome extension um, which shows me all of my collection and block IDs, all of my IDs on the page. It's called the um, Squarespace Collection Block Identifier Chrome extension. Um, I, I love to use that one. It makes it very easy. Okay, so now I've said the block ID H1, and you'll notice that I don't need this important tag anymore for this code to work, and so that's a good selector. So I've only changed the heading ones in this particular block. No other heading ones are changed to red. I can also change the font size. Okay. I could um, make it italic. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different properties that I can apply to this particular heading one in this block. Let's look at another example. Maybe I want to change this button color and I don't want to change any other buttons. I just want this particular button. So first I'm going to leave myself a note. I'm going to be specific so I remember what this code is for. I hover over top of this and click inspect. Okay. And I see I have some classes here to target this element. So I could say I want the Squarespace block button element large. This is one of the classes, so I'm going to copy this. Put a period because I'm choosing a class. Open and close in curly bracket, and maybe I want to change the background to red. And again, you'll notice I'm having to use the important tag to make it work because I'm changing the color on all of the Squarespace, the large button blocks, um, which I could change in the style editor. I can change the color of buttons. So I'm having to override something in the style editor. And again, because I'm using a class, that is going to change all of the large button elements this color. Right? If I only want this one, then again, I need to choose an ID because the ID will be specific to this button. And in Squarespace, the IDs we use are block IDs. I'm going to choose this Chrome extension and I see this block ID come up. I'm just going to pop it right in front. And now I probably don't need this important tag in order for it to work. It's a good selector. So I have the block ID, so it's only applying to this button and I'm choosing to change the color of the button large. Okay. So no other buttons on this page will change color, only this one. Another good strategy if you're struggling to find the selector is to use the CSS written already inside of Squarespace. So if I wasn't sure what I need to do to change this background, again, I'm gonna hover over top, right click and select inspect. I'm gonna click on the element inside of here and it will bring up all of the CSS for that particular element. So let me just make this a little bit bigger here for you to see. So I've selected this and I'm going to scroll through here to find the background color. Okay? Now this you'll see is the code that I wrote, um, but if we keep going down we'll see that the background color for this button was set right here. Um, and you'll notice some is grayed out. We only want to use the ones that are black, the grayed out ones don't apply in this particular situation. And so it used black Squarespace block button element in order to um, change that background. And you'll see that that code has also worked to change it red, or I can change it blue or, or what have you. Um, now looking at these class names, that means that I have changed the background blue for all the Squarespace block button elements that are in this black theme. So that is a theme class. And so if I find other um, sections that also have that theme, then that um, button will also be blue. So if I change this, if I change this to black, you'll see it also turns blue. So it turns every button 
that is in the black theme blue. And if I want to alter that to make it only for the button at the top, then I would choose the block ID and instead of black, I would put the block ID there. Okay, and now this one is blue, but the other section that is also black is not blue because I've used the block ID. Okay, so just to wrap up, um, for your basic CSS, we have a selector, an open curly bracket, property, colon, value, semicolon, closing curly bracket. I have a list of the most popular properties and their value options listed in a guide below, so check that out. Make sure you grab that so you have a list of all the different properties and values that you would want to use. And then the first, but the hardest bit is just the selector, which just takes some practice to understand what you need to use here in order to target that element. So I suggest just opening a Squarespace trial site and playing around in there to practice choosing and getting the right selector. And that is the basics of CSS in Squarespace. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel or again, get that freebie in the footer to get your list of properties. And I will also then add you to my email list so that I can notify you when a new tutorial is posted.